the segment I've been looking forward to all day. Not like us or the most hated rivals in college football. For those of y'all that live underneath that particular rock, congratulations. Kendrick Lamar and Drake have been beefing. And I'm excited because I had to hear the old heads tell me all about Biggie and Tupac. And how you had to choose a side, West Coast rap versus East Coast rap. I know where I stood on that because Biggie went to private school. And you're not going to come back from that, dog. You don't, you don't, your iceberg sweatshirt is not going to help you when I know that you went to private school in Best Eye. Okay? Okay. Now, we get Drake versus Kendrick Lamar, or we should say Kendrick Lamar body bagging Drake. Now, for those of y'all don't know, J. Cole kind of started this, right, when he was talking about, you know, he feel like Muhammad Ali and he thought the three best rappers in the game right now were himself, Drake, Kendrick Lamar. Drake decided that he wanted to start busting shots at everybody and people tended to bust those shots back, okay? I mean, on the diss tracks, right, because nothing has been substantiated and the shooters that you may have seen or not seen, you know, we're not touching that. What we are going to say is these tracks are fire. And the last one, not like us, number one in the Billboard Top 100. I can't remember the last time that somebody's diss track, somebody's beef track went straight to number one and Kendrick got three in the top 10. All while we're still waiting on Drake to have some sort of response, but it doesn't feel like this is going to happen because it's gotten way out of hand with Kendrick Lamar just running away from this. Also been real cool for me to watch because, well, I now got friends that either got to step up for Drake or they got to step up for Kendrick and we having these discussions. And what it came back to was, you know, do we have this in college football? Yeah, we do have this in college football. We got dudes that can't stand each other. So I'm gonna give you a list of them. And you can tell me in the comments on the YouTubes and the comments on the tweets, whether or not you agree. So number one, Ohio State versus Michigan. Yeah. I'm going to contend that Kendrick Lamar is Ohio State and Michigan is Drake. Okay. I think that measures up pretty well, because if you're looking at what Drake's career has been like, and you look at, say, God's plan, right, when he was on it or nonstop, that's kind of what you get from Michigan. But the gutter dude, the dude everybody going to ride with, to pimp a butterfly, humble, damn, swimming pools, that's Kendrick Lamar, right? When he's on, like he's on right now, he is not only unstoppable, he is so much fun to watch. 2014 Ohio State comes to mind, right? 2019 Ohio State was fun to watch. 2020 Ohio State, fun to watch. You're trying to get back to that. I think that one fits. And they can't stand each other. So much so that they announced that Ohio State Michigan was going to be a big noon game. Yeah. Okay. And then Ohio State says, we're on Fox TUN, that team up north. They don't even say it up there. They don't even say it. Michigan, I don't know, man. They like to have James Earl Jones coming out of the stadium and whatnot. And they are the national champ. So I'm going to give them their due. But it feels more like Kendrick Lamar because. Ohio State really got to tell you what they think about Drake. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. Okay, next on the list, Oklahoma versus Texas. So much so that every time somebody has the bright idea to sell a beat Texas that ain't going to get knocked down, I got to go find a hat. Matter of fact, my mama's favorite hat that I bought her says beat Texas across the top, okay? In Oklahoma, we have to beat Texas. I don't know that Texas always got to beat us, but we got to beat Texas, right? I keep hearing about the business economy down there. It's four different states. It's the flagship. They came up with an ACT score that kind of really tried to put them in an Ivy League situation. They get these great professors. They get everybody to come on campus, and we still beat the hell out of them. I need that. I need that. That beatdown we got when Dylan uh, Gabriel was hurt, had to pay that back. Had to pay that back, okay? I'm going to already tell you that Oklahoma, Kendrick Lamar, because we've got to have this, and Texas is Drake. For too long, Texas was able to get by just by going, no, we want to win our way. At Oklahoma, we recruit everybody all the time. Get them in here. We got to go win. Understand, it's personal when we play Texas. I don't know that it's always personal when Texas plays us, right? That might tell you that it means a little bit more to us. Fine. Fair. Football. College football. That's the pro team here. We ain't got no Cowboys. We ain't got no Texans. We got the Sooners, okay? Oklahoma versus Texas is on this list. Next on this list. NCAA versus pay for play. Not for nothing, but the firm of House and Alston about to clean the NCAA out, dog. These cases are moving through court at a speed in which you got Charlie Baker saying out loud, we got to get to a settlement. We got we to settle this. That's the thing. 
because we're talking about billions of dollars in damages that NCAA member institutions may owe to dudes that ain't even play no more, let alone the guys that are playing right now at a moment when the sport has never been more valuable. Remember, ESPN paid damn near $8 billion for the rights to the college football playoff alone, right? We got bowl of directors who are going, hey, let's find a way to cut these players in so we can keep our bowls afloat, right? We're changing the college football schedule in such a way that the University of Alabama had a crappy field in the spring because they might have to host a game at Alabama in December and they've never had to do that. That's what the money's looking at, right? This is before we start talking about what guys are getting paid in uh, NIL collectors and how that is going to need to, uh, need to be folded in. But universities don't want nothing to do with that because that's more employees that you got to pay. And it opens you up to some level of liability. And nobody wants to actually do the hard work of finding out what that looks like by having a union for these players that are in transient positions and a union that's going to negotiate with a collective bargaining agreement that represents, say, the major uh, powers in college football. The NCAA has been beating the hell out of pay for play for almost 150 years. So much so that we're talking about the 1950s when television coming in is talking about the ruin of college football. It's taking a little bit longer to ruin college football. I don't think college football is going to get ruined. I think college football is too big to fail. But I also see the NCAA hiding a child, if you will. Man, infrared, push T. And I see pay for play is what we do now. We understand. Go get your money, right? I'm not mad at the kids for this. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. That's not me. I'm going to say, go get your money. Don't lie to me about what you want. And then let's go get it. Let's see if we can't work this together. This only works if everybody comes out here feeling as if they're a little bit unhappy, but mostly happy. I think we can get to that. We just got to get the adults back to the table and we got to do it before the walls close in on the sport and we're all grasping at straws when we could have just had this thing done. Okay, next on the list for me, Florida State versus College Football Playoff Selection Committee. <laughs> All right. I never thought I would be that dude hosting a national show going, you know what, Florida State got a whole ass point against College Football Playoff, but they do. They went 12-0, 13-0. They won the ACC title. That was good enough for Clemson, right? You know what I'm saying? It was good enough for Florida State years ago. But the quarterback goes out in a game that wasn't nobody watching, right? And they decided to hold a grudge against this team and let in Alabama. Turned out to be a great game against Michigan. But even the Michigan fans were like, what do you think about Florida State? We were looking forward to them. And then you got the attorney general at Florida uh, going, hey, we're going to bat for Florida State. And then you get the attorney general in the South going at, <laughs> going at the NCAA college football playoff about this. Florida State fans were already, to put it mildly, some kind of way, period. Okay, just check on FSU Twitter every now and again. Now they are aggrieved and righteously so. I would never shut up about this. This would be the conspiracy. This would be my tinfoil hat everywhere I go when something bad happens to Florida State that is out of my control, out of theirs. I would say the game is rigged because in this moment, the game was absolutely rigged by the selection committee. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it's, it was unconscionable. The selection committee was supposed to break ties, right? Human eyes to break ties. What they did was squeeze out a perfect football team because their eyes lied to them, okay? I don't, I don't see this. You win every game. You should have every opportunity to play for the belt. You should also have the opportunity to get your ass beat playing for the belt. That's why the 12-team playoff is here now because the Florida States of the world are going to continue to happen, right? We got to have a fair way to get through this. And Florida State and the College Football Playoff Select Committee – that's just going to be what it is from now until we stop playing college football, and that's nowhere soon. Last on this list for me, message board poster versus the flip commit. It's an oldie but a goodie. For those of y'all that do not participate in message board culture, congratulations. You are a better man than me. This is how I was raised. I came up looking at message boards. I came up writing for sites that had message boards and hiding behind a pseudonym has always been the great way to try to tear down a kid who decided – he would rather go to Kansas State than Kansas. That he'd rather go to Stanford than Notre Dame. Okay. Some of the things that you've seen a message board poster post, if you have been on message boards, you're like, yeah, I know that guy. I, I might actually know that guy. You might actually be that guy. In which case, I'm going to ask you, please be an adult, grow up. It's fine. It's okay. 
But this is going to continue to go on, especially with naming and like just becoming such a not a bigger part of the sport, but a part of the sport that we're all more comfortable talking about. So you're going to have message board posts going, well, I guess money is what it's all about. I mean, that's yeah, dog. I mean, up until a certain threshold, that is what it's about. It, 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 it really is. It's about getting paid. Now, there's there's a there's a level to it where it doesn't matter that much. But the money always going to be important because let me tell you something. At a certain level. It ain't how much you're getting paid because you got a family to feed. It's how much you're getting paid because you keep it score. Okay? That is the thing. Being the highest paid at your position, the highest paid in your place, that's always going to carry weight. That's going to give you some gravitas walking around the office. That's what the kids are after too because they're 17 to 18 years old. And not only that, it used to be, we'll give you a Trans Am. And then, you know, Eric Dickerson drove that Trans Am back up to SMU. Now, Take a look at the Georgia parking lot, dog. Lambos, Ferraris, big trucks. Matter of fact, shout out to <laughs> shout, shout out to my guy Nolan Smith, who has never seen a big truck that he doesn't love, and his country is all get out. But you understand my point here, right? It's about keeping score. It's about being able to show off. That's what you're up for. Message board poster, that's never going to be that guy. So what he's going to do, he's going to write something mean on a board with very little grammar and some missing articles and probably seven or eight misspellings to say, I don't like this child that decided to go somewhere else. Not like us. If you haven't heard it, go listen to it. It's a bop. It's a jam. They playing it at the clubs. You got kids out here saying OVO, but the V starts with an H and ends with an E. Dog, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what else happens here. I'm eating all of this up. It's been the thing that has been keeping me afloat until we start playing college football in August. I'm so down. I'm so ready. If you like what you've seen, consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.